Are you a coder or a software engineer? Because they're not the same thing. And even though job descriptions use them interchangeably, the divide is about to become really clear with what's happening in the space right now. And the more I talk about AI and its impact on IT roles, the more I'm seeing a disconnect between coding and those engineering principles. I see this as the difference between just making it work and the discipline of software engineering, which is about clear requirements, managing trade-offs, and crafting high quality, easier to maintain software. Now, Silicon Valley and those Elon Musk types of people, they like to move fast and break things. And that's fine for some applications. I mean, after all, if your Twitter feed goes down, it's an inconvenience. But a lot of the software that runs our critical infrastructure, like power stations, government payment systems, and even self-driving cars, if they ever get there, those can harm and even kill people with faulty code. And this is something I've been personally struggling with as AI tools, particularly vibe coding, go mainstream. No surgeon goes into surgery without a plan. No building architect pours concrete based on their vibes. But in tech, I'm seeing more complaints from engineers who care about quality that are being sabotaged by management who say they're not being agile enough or not being AI first, whatever that means. It's an attitude that's being magnified by the vibe coding movement. Now, let me be clear about something. Low code and no code tools, they've been around for decades. In fact, for companies that can't afford to hire great engineering teams, these tools can get the job done and they provide economic value for those basic software systems. And I do like vibe coding as a way to run quick experiments and get a prototype out. After all, getting to feedback, especially in startups, is really important. But engineering, is not magic. I'm concerned about people who want to blur the line between outputting code and engineering. The term engineering means something. Engineering isn't guessing. Engineering is making decisions under constraints. So when someone says they're interested in a career in software engineering, yes, you have to learn to code. That is the minimum bar. It's the table stakes to even be considered for a role in this field. But the really valuable people, the ones who make a career of this, they do way more than just code. The code is actually the last step in the process. And as you get more experience, the code is actually often the easiest part. And I know that's hard to imagine as a beginner since you're spending most of your time wrestling with coding syntax, but trust me, with time and effort, writing code becomes substantially easier. But the engineering of real world solutions, that's the fun and interesting part that also gets you paid. And this is a beginner channel, so let's talk a little bit about trade-offs. The problem is there is never an unlimited amount of time, money, and other resources. For example, as a field, we love to talk about performance and we love those benchmark charts, but sometimes the application doesn't have millions of users. And running on modern hardware means that performance will likely never be an issue. So an engineer will approach that application differently than something that needs to run on a Netflix scale. So for example, the local soccer league that I used to coach, they were looking for a software solution to manage their rosters, schedules, and other player and coach information. They asked if I wanted to build them something. Now, could I build them something? Absolutely. But is that a good use of my time and their money? Absolutely not. Instead, I helped them find a SaaS product that met most of their needs, and then I encouraged them to evolve their existing processes to better fit to that software. They had a small budget, and they honestly had no ability to maintain any software that I would have written for them. Sometimes the best code is no code at all. And what about security? We should protect people's data in general, but Going back to that soccer league and the data that they were holding, names, email addresses, phone numbers, that doesn't require the same level of care as a banking or healthcare system. I often tell the learners that I'm mentoring that both a daycare and a prison require security, but how you're gonna go about it is substantially different. And this is what real professional engineers do. 
Now, how does this change things for software professionals? Well, in professional software engineering, the most valuable workers, they are the ones that go and gather the information on the requirements and the constraints, and then they optimize the solution for cost, speed, quality, and other factors. And those other factors, sometimes they're stupid. Like sometimes you just have to appease an executive's ego or other times you're forced to work with a vendor because the salesperson is friends with the decision maker or, you know, everybody's favorite, nepotism instead of real quality. I didn't make the world, I just try to live in it. But with the AI hype, there's a real danger and honestly mounting evidence that stakeholders are going to pressure engineers to prioritize speed over quality. Engineering is hard. It requires asking questions and making a plan, which does slow things down early on. And even if AI ends up writing a substantial amount of the code, without proper engineering design and quality assurance, what is produced will be lower quality. And we're already seeing studies that show that. Complex tasks, AI assistance often slows things down. And the reason for this in coding is because reading and reviewing code that you didn't write is much slower than writing your own code. Take it from me, I'm a mentor. I review a lot of code I didn't write. There's more data to collect and research to be done, but experienced developers like me are not surprised by some of these early findings on productivity or the lack thereof. Also, I don't think it's a coincidence that the big tech leaders that are bragging about how much of their code is written by AI are meanwhile seeing massive outages and quality issues. I'm looking at you, AWS and Azure. And just like a home builder doesn't start digging a foundation without a blueprint and surveying the site, a business should not be building critical processes without understanding the technology, the time, the budget, and the expected value. And all of this is why the education of software developers must change. Yes, you need to learn how to code. That's the table stakes because you must be able to prompt and more importantly, review the produced code. But I predict that the architecture and design decision-making will become the biggest differentiator in the hiring pool. This is part of the drag on the hiring of entry-level developers. In a way, a senior developer writing down the details so that an entry-level developer can complete tasks, that's really similar to writing a prompt. And if you can't bring any value to the table other than producing code from a prompt, you're not gonna be very valuable. And this is a big reason why my courses have capstone projects that start from scratch. Learning to evaluate requirements and design and build software is way better preparation than just following tutorials. And I believe it will be the difference between people who get employed and are unemployable. Now, as far as AI as coding assistants, they do provide value. And I do believe that they are here to stay, just like IntelliSense and Autocomplete in decades past. But the question many beginners are starting to ask is whether they should be using AI at all. And the answer I've been giving the people that I'm mentoring is yes, you should use AI, but not right away. Get really solid on the fundamentals, build a few full stack applications, and then you can start using AI for the boilerplate tasks that you deeply understand. Learning this craft takes time and you're gonna get frustrated, but it's that frustration that triggers the growth in the engineering part of your brain. And if you reach for AI every time you encounter the least bit of resistance, you're never going to grow as a developer. And I talk to hiring managers every week in my line of work. And it's weird because we're simultaneously seeing a poor job market. And yet the biggest frustration that my hiring manager friends have is that the applicants they're getting are completely unqualified. People are using AI tools to spam resumes and they're using AI assistants to try to cheat their way through interviews. Good people are getting overlooked because of this. But interestingly enough, companies like Google are starting to shift their hiring processes back towards in-person interviews where they're starting to ask more engineering questions and less leak code. And personally, I find this encouraging because I've never really thought that memorizing leak code was a strong indicator of how well 
somebody will do on the job. And when it comes to the layoffs, this isn't the first tech correction we've had. Some of these layoffs are just about the numbers. And when a big financial cut happens at a company, good people get let go. But at the same time, what I'm hearing from managers is that when they are asked to make cuts, the first people on the block are the ones that they don't trust to make good engineering decisions. And the same thing happened to the lead up in the dot-com crash. During that boom, if you could spell HTML, you were getting a cushy, well-paid job. And then when the correction hit, anyone with those superficial skills, they were eventually let go. And many of them were forced out of the field because they never developed proper engineering and coding skills. So my advice during these tough times is to work to improve your engineering and your communication skills. And all of this is starting a shift in how those technical interviews are handled. As companies seek engineering skills, communication, and judgment, you should expect to be asked more questions about your understanding of systems, design decisions, and how you evaluate trade-offs. And part of what I do in my business work is helping interviewers get better at interviewing. Because sitting back and just watching candidates slam their faces against lead code problems is not the way hiring is going to work effectively moving forward. We're making a deliberate shift towards conversational style interviews where we dig into what you've built, how you've went about it, and most importantly, why. And on the coding side, yes, there always are going to be some small coding assessments. But again, I'm seeing a shift towards including code reviews in the hiring process. This is doubling down on engineering skills, critical thinking, communication, and judgment. Now, I don't think that junior developers are cooked or that engineering expertise is in danger of being replaced. However, if you're a beginner and all you can do is prompt your way to a to-do app built on React and you don't understand how anything works, you're probably unemployable. Not because producing code isn't valuable, but you're just not gonna be able to differentiate yourself from anyone else who can write a prompt. And it's a tough market out there. And when candidate supply increases like it has, the bar for hiring naturally goes up. And this is what I'm predicting for 2026. We're gonna see a shift away from superficial skills towards engineering. My Skill Foundry students, they've been succeeding even in this tough market because they learn not only how to code, but also how the components of the applications come together and the various trade-offs and approaches and what those actually mean. And when you get to an interview with a competent professional, being able to describe what you've built, the choices you made, and why you made them will carry far more weight than having a GitHub repository with code that the hiring manager doesn't even know if you wrote. So my advice to learners going into 2026, slow down learn to code with an engineering mindset. If the code works and you don't understand why, then you're not finished. And if the code works and you cannot explain it to someone else in a way that makes sense, you're not finished. Engineering skills are what will make you stand out from everyone else who's taken shortcuts. Happy coding.